Hi, I'm Mitz McBuild. You may recognize me from other instructional videos like Stab and Sew, The Beginner's Guide to Surgery at Home, or Fireproof Your Home, The Asbestos Way. Today I'll be showing you how to build this Hidden Dice Tower Kit. Well, of course, you're going to start by opening the box. You're going to get a bag of hardware, a lid, and the top of your tower, as well as all the tower pieces, probably assembled, some hinges, and of course the outside piece of the case, which may also be assembled already. Inside that bag of hardware, you're gonna get three pieces of cloth, a large hinge pin, two little triangle temple pieces, a small hinge pin, as well as eight magnets. You're also gonna get two 10 millimeter Chicago screws, two eight millimeter Chicago screws, four six millimeter Chicago screws, and enough heads to screw them all. You're also going to get four angle brackets, as well as four wood screws and four washers. You're also going to need some basic hand tools, several different types of glues and adhesives, some paper towels to clean up messes, and of course lube and alcohol. Now it's time for the work to begin. If you have a nicer table, you're going to want to cover it with either cardboard or plastic, and then you can lay out all the necessary pieces so you're ready to work. The first thing we're going to do is clean up all these pieces of plastic. It helps to keep them partially assembled because that's going to make it a little easier to clean between all the cracks. Now just get a paper towel or rag and wet it down with some isopropyl alcohol and we're going to use that to wipe off all of the soot and burn marks and smoke that was left over from the laser cutter. Now that everything's all cleaned up it's time to install the magnets so we're going to grab these four pieces and then we're going to put those two back and get the right ones. Now when installing the magnets, it is absolutely critical that they are all facing the correct direction. So what you'll want to do is keep them in a stack so that they're all aligned properly, and then mark one side with a sharpie, and make sure that they're then laid out on a piece of metal so that you know which direction is up. I can now lay the two pieces of the tower on that same metal surface, and we're going to add a dab of super glue. Laying it on top of a metal table helps a lot because then when you add the magnet, it just automatically pops it down and holds it tight against the glue. As you can see, I'm doing the inside part of the tower first, and for every magnet that I apply, they're all going to have the Sharpie mark facing up. If you're assembling multiple towers, it's a good idea to do them all at once. That way, when you're done, the towers will be interchangeable if you should move them around. Now, moving on to the outer case portion of the assembly, we want to make sure that we install the magnets in the opposite orientation. So now all of the Sharpie marks are going to be facing down. Again, if you're doing multiple towers, do them all at once so they're all facing the same direction on every assembly. Now we'll let those dry for a little bit and move back to the main assembly. Here we're going to be installing the 10 millimeter Chicago screws. Notice that these both have a half moon shape cut out of them. We're going to be gluing these in with super glue as well, so it's important that we make sure we have the orientation correct and double check that everything moves about freely. Make sure that these move in and out nice and easily because once the glue is set, there's no moving them again. When you install them, make sure that the heads are on the side that have no designs cut into it, and you want to make sure that the flat side sits in the correct orientation so that it doesn't interfere with the box joints. Make sure that the head of the Chicago screw is pressed down flat against the acrylic so that the threads protrude all the way out the other side. Next we'll be using contact cement or similar to adhere the cloth pads to the dice landing surfaces. Starting with the dice tray, it's important that we get a nice even coat of contact cement all over the bottom without getting any on the sides. If you do get some on the sides, a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel will also help clean this up. As for the cloth pads themselves, make sure that the back is fully covered, but avoid getting any on the front of the pad. If you're familiar with contact cement, then you know that you want to let this set up and dry until it's tacky and ready to be applied together. Different brands have different dry times, so follow the instructions on the can. When it's time to mate the two surfaces together, it can be a bit intimidating, but just take your time and make sure that you start with one corner and apply it as close to the edge as possible, and then use your finger to smooth out so that no bubbles and wrinkles appear. And after that, you can then use either a screwdriver, another flat but not sharp metal tool, or even the head of one of those Chicago screws in order to press the corners down nice and tight. Before we move on to the two dice ramps, we want to make sure that we're applying the cloth to the correct side. The easiest way to do this is to partially assemble this part of the tower, and then double check that everything is lined up the way it should be. 
The front edges of both of these pieces have an angle cut. Make sure it's parallel to the front of the tower and then mark the top by scoring it with a knife or file. You will now know which side of the two dice ramps is the one that you're going to want to apply the glue and of course the cloth to. The process of course will be exactly the same, but as you're applying the contact adhesive to the lower landing ramp, try to make sure that you don't get any glue on the edge tabs. These two rectangles end up going inside of another piece of acrylic, so they don't need any cloth or glue on top of them. When mating the cloth onto this piece, make sure that the front is the part that you align perfectly. The back will be deep inside the tower and hard to see, while this front line here will be visible right next to the dice tray. Similar to the last one, make sure you do not get any adhesive on these two rectangle tabs. Mating these two pieces together can also be a bit intimidating, but I found that the best thing to do is to line up the front edge and make sure it's nice and square, and from that point on it'll be very easy to make sure that the legs line up as well. Also, as long as you're only off by a tiny little bit, you can use your finger to stretch the cloth to the edge to make it line up perfectly. With all those pieces done, it's time to move on to building the outer case. We have four pieces, as well as this printed square, which I call the alignment base. Before we start gluing, you want to make sure everything's lined up properly. Make sure that the two magnets are facing the inside and toward each other, as well as the other two without magnets. Make sure the countersunk holes are also facing in toward each other. In order to glue the acrylic pieces together, I like to use E6000. Not because it's the strongest glue, but because it's flexible and it takes a long time to dry. If you make a mistake or if you need to readjust something, it's nice to be able to move things around or take them completely apart and re-glue them. If you were to use a plastic weld or some type of super glue, you'd be unable to do this. Notice that as I'm applying the glue to the inside of the box joints, I'm putting it on the outside edge. This way, if any glue leaks out, it'll be on the outside of the box away from the other section of the dice tower. Now it's time to repeat the process for the third wall of the case. Make sure that of course everything's still lined up properly and the two sets of magnets are facing each other. Again, keep glue on the outside edge so it'll stay out of the center and then press everything snugly together. Fourth wall of the case is just more of the same except this time we'll be applying glue to two sets of box joints at once and then making sure everything fits together nicely. Now that all four walls of the case are done, it's time to add the alignment base. You'll want to glue this on while the glue of the case is still wet. That way, anything that needs to wiggle around or readjust can do so easily. The only difference between these joints and the ones you previously glued is that you can now add glue to both the top and bottom of each box joint, making sure to use still a small amount of glue, but cover every single surface. Now that all the joints have been glued together, you're going to go around and carefully inspect and find any extra glue that may have squished out. Use that same rag or paper towel that's wet with alcohol and simply pinch the corners to remove any glue. Make sure everything is firmly pressed together and then we're going to let the glue dry for about 24 hours. If you own wood clamps, now would be a good time to apply them, using only a very small amount of pressure to clamp everything in place. If you do not own wood clamps but you're still noticing small gaps in between the box joints and you want to press it together tightly, have someone help you by pressing the box joints together and then wrap the entire case in a small amount of scotch tape or painter's tape. Now just set the case aside where it will be undisturbed for 24 hours. Of course while that's drying I can also work on the inside portion of the tower. We're going to go ahead and grab that front section and start gluing that as well. You're only going to want to add glue to the very top three of the box joints because that's all we're going to start with. Then we're going to add glue to the corresponding box joints on the inner guide rail, and then we're going to mate those two pieces together. Notice that the stone etch designs are both facing out. Now we're going to install the two dice ramps. You do not actually need to use any glue at this time, we're just going to set them inside. Then I'll repeat the process of adding glue to the top three box joints on the tower front, and then applying the other side of the guide rail. Obviously, you'll need to make sure that the tabs on the dice ramps fit inside of the guide rail before you glue everything together. And then you'll want to push it all together nice and snugly, and again, if there's any glue coming out, you'll want to clean it up with a wet paper towel. This is especially important because this is a face that shows the most. Now we're going to set that aside for a moment and work on the back side of the tower. 
Test fit these three pieces first because the back section can be installed upside down and then it'll be misaligned. Once you've done that, gluing them together is pretty straightforward. This time just make sure you err on putting the glue on the inside of the joints because the outside section will show. Now once you've installed the third wall of this section, you're going to want to leave it pried open a little bit further than 90 degrees. This is to allow the first section to fit inside of it easily when we install those two pieces together. We're going to start by adding those small dabs of glue to each of the box joints on the back section. Again, erring on the side of putting too much glue on the inside rather than the outside of each joint. And then we're going to do the same to the front section. After that, put a very small amount of glue all over the surface of the inner panels. Make sure not to get glue near the front and the hinge pin because that will be an exposed surface. It's now time to mate these two pieces together. Again, make sure that the back section has been pried open slightly so that when you insert the front section, it does not smear all of that glue up to the front where you don't want it. Once it has been pushed all together and snapped tight, carefully inspect every joint to make sure that it is flush and that there are no gaps between them, and also make sure that any excess glue has been wiped away. Next, you can apply wood clamps and or tape in order to keep everything held in place. And again, this part is going to be drying for 24 hours as well. Once the glue is dried, we're going to take all those clamps and or tape off. And now we're going to install these dice guides. These small pyramids help make sure the dice make their way back out of the tower easily and are installed using a simple dab of super glue. Keep in mind that these two pieces are not identical. They have both a left and a right and there will be a small hole which should face toward the outside of the tower when installed. Again, you're going to want to do a dry run and test fit them and make sure they line up perfectly before you add any glue. The lid and handle go together easily enough. It's simply a matter of pushing the hinge pin all the way through. There should be almost zero resistance for the pin to slide through the actual handle, but on either side of the lid it will likely be very snug. Use a screwdriver or similar metal tool to push the pin through, but if you encounter a lot of resistance, use a small drill bit to hone out the hole on the outside edge. Next, we're going to apply a small amount of grease to some of the moving parts. That's going to include the holes here on the side of the dice tray, as well as the hinge pins which are sticking out the side of the tower. Be careful to only put grease on the outside of the metal and not inside where the threads are. In the next step, we're going to be adding thread locker, and if there's grease inside of the threads, that's going to cause all sort of problems. When using thread locker, a very small amount of liquid is required. Just put the tiniest dab on the threads of the screw, and then be careful not to get any of it all over the plastic or any other part of the tower. When you tighten these screws down, you want them to be snug, but do not try to over tighten them. The Loctite will do its job to keep everything where it belongs. We're going to repeat the process on the other side, and once the screws are installed, make sure that these hinges move back and forth easily and that the screws themselves are not moving. Next up, we're going to also install those 8mm Chicago screws into the sides of the dice tray. The Chicago screws need to be installed from the inside facing out. That way it's going to be much easier to get to the heads of the screw. Again, we're going to use a little bit of Loctite, and I want to make sure that everything moves freely once I'm done. With the screw tightened all the way down, you should still be able to easily move the dice tray back and forth. Lastly, we're going to put our two sections together. For this, we're going to apply a small amount of grease to the inside of these sliders. Then simply make sure that the magnets line up, pop everything together, close it all the way down, and then we can install our pin. If your kit came with one long 85 millimeter pin, simply slide it all the way through and attach a screw to the other side. If your kit came with two 12 millimeter pins instead, simply install them from the inside facing out and then attach the two screw heads from the outside as well. And that's it. Your tower is done. It's time to move on to installing it inside the table. Now, of course, the first thing you're going to need to do is figure out where you'd like to install your dice tower. Start by putting some painter's tape in the approximate location of where you'd like it to go. After that, you can use a measuring tape to mark the corners and make sure that it's evenly spaced and parallel. Next, you're going to put the dice tower upside down on top of the painter's tape and mark around it using a pen or pencil. Avoid using a marker, as the marker will be very difficult to get off of the tower. 
Next, you're going to use a sturdy metal ruler and a razor knife in order to cut along the lines and score the top of the table. Make sure to start in the corner and pull toward the middle. If you're starting in the middle and pulling toward the corner, you will probably go past the corner and score more than you mean to. Failure to cut these deep score marks will cause a problem when you end up using the jigsaw. As you're cutting along the edge of those lines, you're going to get little chips that will fly up and ruin the veneer. Once you've cut score marks all the way through the tape and the table, you can now remove the tape, and this will just make it easier to see where your marks are. Next, I'm going to use a large spade drill bit to drill a hole into the table, which is larger than the saw blade I plan to use. I'm going to do this for two corners of the square cutout, being careful to stay inside the lines and not hitting the edge of the tape. Next, I'm going to use a jigsaw to start cutting along the edge of the lines. I'm going to start in the corner and then work toward the opposite corner, trying to make sure I just barely touch the inside of the tape line. I'll then turn the saw around and make my way back toward the first corner, taking my time to be very careful and make sure that I'm staying on the inside of the tape line without actually hitting it. I sped up the last clip just a little bit, and I want to show you this cut in real time so you can see just how much time I am taking as I slowly work across the table, being sure to keep the saw blade where I want it. With the rough cut done, it's time to sand the edges and clean them up. Now here I am using a power finger sander, but you may remember that the name of the show is More Tools Than Sense. Not only are most people unlikely to own this tool, it's not actually the best way to do the job. If you want to make sure that your cutout is exactly the right size and all the corners are nice and straight and true, the best tool for the job is actually just a block of wood with some sandpaper wrapped around it. This of course will be much slower, however, if you go too far and overdo it, there's really no way to make the hole smaller at this point. So take your time sanding out a little bit at a time, frequently stopping to check and see if it's the right size. When you're done, you want the lid of the dice tower to fit inside the hole, and you want to be able to fit about two playing cards in the gap on all four sides. This square is not quite done yet and needs to be further sanded. With the hole cut, it's time to move on to the actual installation. I'm going to need a drill with a bit and a stopper. I'm going to need some screwdrivers, and of course the finished dice tower, and those playing cards. You're going to want to take that table you cut the hole into and flip it completely upside down. If you're just working on a leaf like I am, this is going to make this much easier. Using the playing cards, you're going to want to shim all four sides of the dice tower, making sure to put an equal number of cards in every side, and making sure that they're fit snugly so that nothing can move around. At this point, I can remove one set of cards, and now use the hinges to line up and mark the holes on the table. At this point in time, I'm also going to want to check which of the three mounting holes in the side of the dice tower is best centered inside the slotted angle iron. This will be important in a moment when I need to install the Chicago screw inside of the mounting hole. I'm going to repeat the process for the other side and then remove the dice tower from the table. Next we're going to drill four pilot holes for the four wood screws that will attach the brackets. Make sure that the drill bit that you're using does not protrude down further than the thickness of the table. If it does, use an extra piece of wood on top of the table as a spacer to ensure that the drill bit doesn't go all the way through and ruin the finish. After those pilot holes are drilled, I can now disassemble the tower in order to install the last four Chicago screws. A small dab of super glue will go into the appropriate countersunk hole, and then I can drop the Chicago screw in and press it home. Repeat that process for all four screws, and then reassemble the dice tower. We're now going to place the dice tower back into the mounting hole, and again shim it with playing cards. In order to make it easy to install the brackets with the playing cards installed, it may be necessary to cut some into slivers so that you can place them down low and out of the way. I'm now going to install the four screw heads, and these will also get the four washers underneath of them. Make sure to tighten these down firmly, but don't overdo it. Finally, it's time to install the four wood screws. Make sure that everything is set exactly the way you want before you do this, because wood screws are not meant to be installed more than once. If something is out of alignment, you can loosen and then readjust the four Chicago screws, but try to avoid loosening and then retightening the wood screws, as every time you do it becomes weaker. It's now time to turn your table right side up and admire all your hard work.
Well, that concludes the build video. Hopefully you're happy with what you have achieved. And if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to help you out as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Thanks for buying. Stay nerdy, my friends.